All right. Um, the notes today are going to be a little bit different because today we are doing an investigation. So investigation one, as you can see, is on um, translating and writing word problems. Um, so there's four different types of word problems. There's problems about combining, problems about separating, there's problems about equal groups, and problems about comparing. All right, so we are gonna see one example of each of these different types of problems. All the problems contain three numbers. A problem becomes a word problem when one of its numbers is replaced with a question. All right, we're gonna see that coming up. We're gonna make three different word problems for each problem in this investigation, or I'm gonna show you how you can, by replacing the number with questions. In later lessons, we're gonna practice solving the word problems. All right, so word problems about combining. We combine two or more quantities by adding them together. We start with some and add some more. Here is a problem about combining. It says, this is what we know. A, the troop hiked eight miles in the morning. B, the troop hiked seven miles in the afternoon. C, all together, the troop hiked 15 miles. Notice that there are three numbers, eight, 17, and 15. Those are the three numbers we're gonna be working with. Um, if you notice that eight and seven add up to 15, that's good. If we know any two of the numbers, we can figure out the third number. So here are three different problems that we could make with this one information. Okay, so suppose that sentence A was missing. So if A was missing, if we didn't know that the troop hiked eight miles in the morning, we only knew that the troop hiked seven miles in the afternoon and altogether 15 miles. So you could say, how many miles did the troop walk in the morning? And you could say, like, we're, remember how you can add letters for numbers? So we're gonna, for um, miles, we're gonna use M. So M plus seven equals 15. Do you see where I get this from? Okay, so M we don't know, because we're pretending we don't know A. So we say they hiked seven, how many miles did we, they hike in the morning? We don't know. They hiked seven in the afternoon, and all together they hiked 15. So if this, if we were missing A, so I'm gonna do this like A is not there. Okay, so this is if we didn't have A. So we would do 15 take away seven equals eight. So then we would know that eight was the missing number. All right, so pretend we didn't have B, then you would say eight plus M equals 15, and you could do the same thing. 15 take away eight equals seven, and seven would go there. And if you didn't have C, then you would say eight miles in the morning plus seven miles in the afternoon equals, <gasps> that would be M. And so you do eight plus seven equals 15. And that is how you would find word problems about combining. So if you were trying to combine these to figure it out. All right, now we're gonna talk about word problems with separating. We separate one quantity from a larger quantity by taking some away or subtracting. So here is the problem about separating. And this problem is about Jack's money, okay? Jack had some money and then he went away to the store and there, here are three numbers for the problem about separating Jack's money. 28, 12, and 16. Same type of thing as with the word problems about combining. We're gonna pretend we don't have D, okay? And then they were like, um, Jack went to the store, but we don't know how much money he had. He, but we do know that he spent $12 at the store and he left, I'm sorry, we, he went to the store, since it's a store, we're gonna do S. He went to the store with money and he spent $12 and he left with 16. 
All right, so in this, you're looking for s, of course. So we know that s take away 12 is going to equal 16. So that also means that 16 plus 12 will give us, because we're going to try and get this s by itself, so we're plus 12 to this side to make that 0. So we just have s by itself, and then plus 12 to this side so we can get the number whatever s is equal to. We'll get them both on the same number of the equal sign. So we can see that that is 28. Yay! If we didn't know E, then we'd say Jack went to the store with $28. I'm going to do this in a British accent now. Jack went to the store with $28. And he left with $16. How much money did Jack spend at the store? So you'd say, well... I don't know. 28 take away 16 equals 12. I don't know what kind of accent this is now. <laughs> and then you'd see that you got 12 there. And then F. Um, so we know that he went to the store with $28 and he spent $12. And now how much is he left with? Well, 28 Take away 12 equals 16. And there is your answer, darling. Okay. Next, we have word problems about equal groups. We just double check. All right, so um, some problems are about items that are clustered in groups of equal size. These problems might describe the number of groups, the number in each group, or the number total of all the groups. By multiplying the number in each group by the number of groups, we can find the total in all groups. Here is an example of equal groups. All right, so here's what we know. This isn't GHRI, but it says, at Lincoln School, there are the same students in each fifth grade class. So G, pretend we don't have G. That is a weird looking G, there we go. Um, so if we didn't have this one, they'd say, there are 30 students in each fifth grade class. Altogether, there are 120 fifth grade students at Lincoln School. So then the question would be, how many students, or how many classes of fifth graders are there? That's what the question would be, if we didn't know how many classes of fifth graders there were. So we'd say, altogether, we know that there's 120 students. And we are trying, gonna divide that by 30 because there are 30 students in each class and all together there's 100 so we're going to take all of them divide them by how many are in each class and say what does that equal to what letter should i put here you can put whatever letter you want so we're going to count by threes if you take off the zero in each of them the 10 trick if you take off the zero you can count by threes to get 12 as long as you take the same amount of zeros off of each one so 3 can go into 12, 3, 6, 9, 12, 4 times. So that means that 30 can go into 120 4 times. Four times. So the answer is 4. This answer goes here. 4. All right, G, H, so this is without H. There are 30 students in each, oh, I'm sorry, without H. At Lincoln School, there are four classes of fifth graders. Altogether, there are 120 fifth grade students at Lincoln School. How many students are in each fifth grade class? So we found out there's four fifth grade students and there's 120, so we'd go 120, well, I said that weird, divided by four equals, I don't know, so, of course, you're going to just count up by fours to 120. Heh, yeah, right. That would take so long. And plus, we can just do this in our head or on the paper. So 120 divided by 4. Well, 4 can't go into 1, but 4 can go into 12. How much times? 4, 8, 12, 3. And then we'd take away 12, which we'd get 0, and then we'd bring that 0 down. Very good, but you'd have to bring that zero up, actually. And 30. There are 30 students in each class. H, I, 
All right, so we don't know how many students there are together. We know at Lincoln School, there are four classes of fifth graders. There are 30 students in each fifth grade class. How many students are there all together? And you'd say, well, if there's four classes and there's 30 in each class, oh, don't you know what that equals? And then you just go 30 times four, that's zero. 12. Oh, looks like the answer is 120. All right, guys, I know you thought this was it, but we've got a little bit more. Make sure you can see it. Perfect. All right, so this one obviously is a little shorter. I'll let you write it down. And as a matter of fact, we can actually kind of zoom in a little bit. There. Do you feel like you're at school? I do. I am. Okay. <laughs> um, so this is a word problem about comparing. So if we didn't have J, oh, let me read to you the story. One way to compare two numbers is to find out how much larger or how much smaller one number is than the other. By subtracting the smaller number from the larger number, we find the difference of the numbers. Consider this problem about comparing. So, pretend we don't have J. You know that there's an Abe, but you don't know how old he is. All you know is that Gabe is 11 years old. Gabe is six years older than Abe. So, Gabe is 11 years old, and that is six years older equals the age of Abe. Because we don't know Abe in this problem. So, you just go 11 Take away six equals five. That's how old he is. JK. <laughs> JK. All right. Um, now we're going to pretend we don't have K. So we say Abe is five years old. Gabe is six years older than Abe. So we have Abe is five and Gabe is six years older than him. How old is he? We're going to use the same number. And we would say, well, that's easy. Five plus 6 equals 11. Now we're going to pretend we don't have L. Last but not least, Abe is 5 years old. Gabe is 11 years old. Gabe is 6 years old. Oh, and then we don't have that one. So we say how many years older is Gabe than Abe? So we'd say 5 plus, we don't know, equals 11. So then you go 11, take away, Five equals six. And that answer, my friend, would go there. All right, you guys have a great day. I hope that your sports practice went well or whatever you had going on this afternoon. I will see you in the morning. Bye.